Our next speaker is uh, Victoria Espinel. When you read her bio, you realize this is somebody who probably never skipped class, and she probably ruined the bell curve for all of us. Um, Ms. Espinel serves in the executive office of the president as the first uh, U.S. Intellectual Property Enforcement Coordinator and has held this office since 2009. When I read that, I wanted to know she, she has a badge. I'll have to ask her. Um, Ms. Espinel is in charge of developing uh, the implementation of the administration's overall strategy for enforcement on intellectual property. Prior to her appointment, Ms. Espinel taught intellectual property and international trade law at George Mason University. She served on the Senate Judiciary Committee as an advisor on intellectual property and as well as on the Senate Finance Committee and, the, uh, and on the staff of the House and Ways and Means Committee. Ms. Espinel has also served as the first Assistant U.S. Trade Representative and the first Chief U.S. Trade Negotiator for Intellectual Property on behalf of the United States uh, Trade Representative's Office. In 2009, Ms. Espinel founded the Bridging the Innovation Divide, a not-for-profit foundation focused on addressing the innovation divide and empowering all Americans to obtain the full benefit of their creativity and ingenuity. Ms. Espinel holds a LLM from the London School of Economics, a law degree, and a Bachelor of Science um, in Foreign Service from Georgetown University. So please uh, welcome Victoria Espinel. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Um, good morning. Thank you very much for having me here today on this beautiful but quite cold morning. Um, so my name is Victoria Espinel. My office is responsible for laying out the strategy for intellectual property enforcement for the administration and then leveraging the resources of the government to ensure that we are executing President Obama's priorities for protecting intellectual property both here at home and overseas. Intellectual property is the cornerstone of innovation and America has always been at the forefront of discovering and bringing it to fruition. In last year's State of the Union, President Obama said, in America, innovation doesn't just change our lives, it is how we make a living. We need to make sure that we foster innovation and that we protect it. And intellectual property rules protect the rights of innovators around the country and the globe. When copyright laws work, they give academics and others who publish their work control over their ideas and enable them to share their knowledge across departments, universities, and countries. When trademarks are valued, consumers can distinguish between products and assign value to quality, performance, and safety. And when patent rights are appropriately protected, investors can accurately measure risk and shift capital to research and development of breakthrough technologies that address complex challenges like food security, disease, and climate change. My first order of business in this new job that I have was to develop the administration's strategy for intellectual property enforcement. We issued that strategy in June 2010. This is the first time any White House has issued an overall vision and plan for intellectual property enforcement. And while putting together this strategy, we sought and received significant public input, over 1,600 comments. We worked closely with the Department of Commerce, Health and Human Services, Homeland Security, Justice, State, the U.S. Trade Representatives, the Copyright Office, and other offices inside of the White House, including the Domestic Policy Council, the National Security Staff, the Office of Science and Technology Policy, and the Office of the Vice President. The strategy was well received, and that is gratifying, but we need to always be looking to the future and seeing how we can do better. So to that end, we are right now in the process of developing the second joint strategic plan that will guide our actions over the next three years. In June, of 2012, my office again asked the public for their thoughts on the direction for this second joint strategic plan. All the comments we received are available to review at regulations.gov, and over the last six months, we've read comments submitted by companies, trade organizations, labor unions, public interest groups, academics, technology experts, and concerned citizens. There were excellent submissions with recommendations on ways to better protect intellectual property, both domestically and internationally, which will be helpful to us and have been helpful to us in shaping the next strategy. Many of the submissions dealt with the Internet's role in intellectual property. The Internet is an extraordinary platform, and its already significant clout continues to grow. Just after Thanksgiving on Cyber Monday, total on the online sales were almost $2 billion, which is nearly double the figure from just two years ago. According to The Economist, the Internet economy in the G20 countries alone will grow to reach over $4 trillion by 2016. Again, this is nearly double the figure from just two years ago. More and more companies depend in part 
or entirely on their internet, on the internet for their business models, and entrepreneurs continue to find new ways to meet customer demand and bring new services online. And to that, I'll just pause for a moment to say thank you to Travis and Uber um, for getting me around, not just last night, um, but ever since Uber came to Washington, D.C. The internet, <laughs> the internet is a great economic equalizer. Millions of businesses use the internet to access global markets. Trade and export barriers that were once impossible to overcome have been reduced or entirely eliminated. Small businesses have a means to get up and running in a globalized world, and big business is able to better streamline supply chains. Cloud services have allowed businesses to quickly and economically rent computing services, so moving data and computing services offline is increasingly common without companies having to buy or store equipment. Billions of individuals use the internet just to stay in touch. Close to two and a half billion people around the world are online, including almost 80% of Americans, on Sunday, hopefully soon, 100% of Americans. These people conduct research for our world-class universities. They can quickly check their senator or congresswoman's voting record, video chat with their grandkids thousands of miles away, read the Washington Post, meet their future husbands or wives, and sometimes stream videos of kittens. The promise of the internet is, after all, about improving quality of life for individuals, families, and communities. And it does that in an immeasurable number of ways. Some are frivolous, but some are absolutely essential to a modern, democratic, and interdependent society. And it isn't just that the internet is changing, continuing to change. The internet has changed us forever. It has raised consumer expectations in ways that will never be rolled back, forcing companies to pivot ever faster to give consumers what they want when they want it with on-demand content, live video gaming, and streaming of movies and music. The internet is therefore critical to our economic and, and social interaction in the 21st century, and it will become only more so as time progresses. Intellectual property is also critical to the internet. You may not hear that very often. There is a mythology that says that intellectual property will ruin the brilliance of the open ocean of the internet where ideas and creativity run free and metaphors are freely mixed. But this is not the case. On the contrary, intellectual property underpins much of the business and the social interaction on the internet. Now there are a lot of ideas out there about how to enforce intellectual property on the internet. And many of these ideas envision a top-down command and control model of authority. As I hope is evident in the work my office has conducted over last three, the last three years, this is not our approach. We need to do three simple things. We need to make sure that we have good laws and then enforce those laws. We need to, we need to engage the public and we need to encourage voluntary private sector initiatives through productive conversations. It is critical that we have as much and as diverse input as we can as we work together to build a strong and open intellectual property environment to foster economic growth. I have taken the open door policy on the road and I have gone to knock on the doors of artists and engineers, scientists and machinists, and the CEOs of some of our most successful companies from Fortune 100 companies to internet startups, some big, some very, very small. I've met with consumer groups, public interest groups, and labor unions. I've done this so that I can learn firsthand what America's artists, engineers, entrepreneurs, executives, and workers need from intellectual property laws in order to make sure that they can continue to create, innovate, and profit from their work. On facilitating productive conversations as an administration, we have taken the approach of encouraging the private sector to engage in cooperative voluntary initiatives to reduce infringement. We have taken what I believe is an effective approach. We've gathered together a group of very smart, engaged people and started talking to each other. Voluntary initiatives must respect privacy, due process, competition, and free speech, and they have to be practical solutions that will really work to protect legitimate uses of the internet. My office has and will continue to work with internet service providers, advertisers, credit card companies, payment processors, search engines, domain name registrars and registries to develop effective ways to take voluntary action to avoid supporting infringing activity and to reduce infringement online. Facilitating discussions is especially important because we need to have everyone involved, everyone who has a role in making the internet function, everyone who has a stake in the internet economy. And many of the companies we've talked to have been very receptive because they recognize that we all have a stake in maintaining a safe and secure marketplace. 
Specifically, since we issued the first Joint Strategic Plan in June 2010, several private sector voluntary initiatives have been concluded. A new nonprofit was established by American Express, Enom, Facebook, Google, GoDaddy, MasterCard, Microsoft, Network Solutions, Newstar, PayPal, Visa, and Yahoo, many of the companies in this room, to combat illegal online fake pharmacies. AT&T, Comcast, Cablevision, Verizon, and Time Warner Cable, and major independent movie studios and music labels entered into a voluntary agreement to reach online piracy. MasterCard, Visa, Amex, Discover, and PayPal all agreed to a set of voluntary best practices to stop pro processing transactions for online sales of counterfeit and pirated goods. And the Association of National Advertisers and the American Association of Advertising Agencies issued a leadership pledge to not support online piracy and counterfeiting with advertising revenue. It is very important to President Obama that the United States government be an example to our citizens and to our governments around the world. The United States must continue to lead by example. And we are at our best when we work together to develop creative, practical, and efficient solutions that promote innovation and protect the foundation that enables the internet to fulfill its promise. I believe in the idea of the American dream, and that idea rests on the ability for people to get credit for the work that they do, both online and offline. I look forward to working together with Congress, with private sector companies, and with the public in general as we move forward in this next term of the Obama administration to continue to build upon our work, continuing to enable America to be an incredible place for innovation, especially on the internet. Thank you very much.